Ian, you were planting on Radhella estate when Radhella, the clubhouse caught fire. And I yes, believe sir. I believe you were first on the scene. Can you just tell me about you know what happened exactly? Well, I suppose here we've got to start with a little bit of background information. The Ragala bungalow overlooks the grounds, at the further end of which from the bungalow is the clubhouse. Then on the hill behind that, on the Nanoya uh, Talavakale Road, was a little cuddy. Right. So I was in my house in the Radhila bungalow and I got a phone call and all the person said was, Mahathya, well, I can't remember the single is where I, in the kade above the club and we're looking at the club and it is on fire. So I don't know what I said, but I must have moved away very quickly, went to the window and looked at the club and I, all I could see was the club and the ridge of the club was bright red. There were no flames. But obviously from that the place it was on fire underneath the roof. So I phoned, I'm not quite sure of the order, but I think this is what it was. I phoned Sekharam, who was the treasurer and at the time on Wangi Oya. Yeah? And I said, Seki, the club's on fire. I'm going down. You get all the buckets and whatever you can and go down there. I'm going to phone the president. As soon as that was organized, I rang Neil Ranavana, who was on Edinburgh. He was the president of the club. I said the same thing to Neil. I said, get down there immediately, Neil. Excuse me. I'm going down to see what I can do. And that was that, and down I went. When I got there, I think by this time fire was starting to come out of the roof. But when I got to the front of the club, Hendrik, the bar barman, was standing outside and obviously thoroughly shaken. And uh, I said to him, I said, Hendrik, open the door. Because I could hear explosions from just inside the double doors to the hall and that was the whiskey going up the the alcohol was blowing up each case was blowing up one time one at a at a time so i wanted to try and get case the whiskey out that was the closest thing to the door and an expensive item so i said to hendrik i said hendrik open the door please he said can't open sir we can't open so i said open the bloody door Otherwise, I'd kick it in. And he opened the door. And then what happened was, the moment we opened the doors, it let the oxygen in. And the whole thing inside, which was subdued flames up to that point, fed with the oxygen, went boom. Right? So it became a conflagration from a fire. Anyway, so it was obvious then that we couldn't do anything from that point. I walked around the club, I noticed that the library was relatively unaffected, so I thought, right, I'll try and save the books. I climbed through the library window, into the library, and started passing the books out. And also there were some cities and stuff there which I thought we could save, and I pushed those through the window as well, and people outside, and I said, put these aside, you know, take these. And then I looked up and there was a rafter above me on fire, starting to fall in. So I did a couple of quick collections of books and put those out as well. And then I looked up and I thought, this is dangerous, that's going to fall and cut me off. So I jumped out. And when I got out, I looked around for the furniture that I passed out and there wasn't a bloody stick of it left. It was all pinched by the laborers who had come in to, to see what was going on and thought, well, this is good, here's a free furniture for us. So off they went with the furniture. I'm not sure what happened to the books. 
Anyway, by this time, the others, or I, I can't remember, had organized a uh, water, water, what's it? When you form a line and buckets are passed up and down, it's, there's a term for it. Anyway, we organized, that had been organized, but it was pointless. That fire was far too intense to do anything like that. You know, you needed a big fire brigade truck. Anyway, the other thing was that under the stage, which was at the library end of the uh, building, were hundreds of wooden chairs, right? That's where they were stored. And of course, when those caught fire, gone, you know? So that's really all that happened. Uh, in terms of the clubhouse itself, I mean, as a reference, if we took the Daravala Club, how did it how did it compare in terms of uh, the aesthetics, and also did it have as much uh, memorabilia in terms of photographs, old photographs, like the Daravala Club? No, no. In regard to the structure of the building, it had one uh, bar room, put it that way, less than Daravala had. Daravala had two bars. Right. Uh, Radella had one. I have no recollection of any book document store. There was no room for any anything like that. There was no room meaning there wasn't a room put aside for that sort of storage. No, the only only thing I can remember in that regard is photographs around the walls in the bar room and in the dressing room next door. That's all I can remember. But all those are burnt. Okay. Nothing of that could be saved. All right. And um, so I suppose the Norelia Golf Club became the, the substitute? Uh, no, 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 I'm not quite sure what happened there. No, we had the next morning, I think, we had uh, or at the very latest, a couple of days later, we had a cleanup organized. There's a photograph somewhere of Ian McDonald and Sally Bousfield, Neil Ranavala, and Kellart, Tommy Kellart, scooping up, shoveling up the ashes. So we started straight away. Chandra Hemachandra of Hemachandra's transport was down there the very next day after the fire, and he nearly wept. Um, he looked around and he was completely devastated. And he said straight away, he said, I'm going to help rebuild this. And I, I'm not sure when this happened, but it would have been at the next committee meeting relative to the fire. I said, we will ask all uh, member all, all the companies that have estates served by the club to donate a rupee per acre. And I think every company did. I'm not sure of the details, how many acres and stuff, but that, that helped a lot to do what we did after that, together with Chandra's uh, contribution of labor and what have you. So what actually, to answer your question, what happened there was, I'm, I'm not sure how we managed temporarily, but the new building, so to speak, new building, the roof and all that was done really was the doors would have been fixed and the roof put on. And that's what we used. All the burnt walls and that's why it didn't affect the drinking, of course, you see. I'm sure so, it yeah, yeah, so that, that's really what happened. And then, of course, sooner, now, that's, I would have left in the, around about the middle of 1964, so I can only account for this um, about a year from whenever it happened. Oh, the tragedy was, and we saw this on Sekharam's face, Seki was the treasurer, and he came to the, one, the, the first meeting and his face was about that long, normally a round face. And he said, the club is not covered by insurance. And the committee members said, what do you mean? He said it lapsed three days before the fire. 
So in his office somehow, this was overlooked for three days. And the poor fellow naturally was devastated because he took it as a, a um, failure on his part, which it might have been or might not have been. That's not the point. The point was it wasn't insured and you just carry on. You don't start pointing fingers. Right. But he must have felt awful. Did you say the walls, most of the walls remained or was it uh, built from scratch? No, 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 no. The walls, most of the walls remained. I seem to remember relatively light damage on top. So it was all the woodwork really that, that uh, burnt and fell in. Okay. So yes, the structure, wall structure was there. Wait a minute. Now the floors were wooden. I can't tell you that. The floors were wooden because there was a dance hall and all that sort of thing, wooden floors. I'm not sure what happened to the floors. But whatever it was, it was redone. Yes. The floors could have burnt because we might have only used the bar, the toilet, and another small room there. I were in use after the fire, so they must have had concrete floors. Okay. All right, Ian. Well, thank you very much for the snippet on, on the Radella fire, which I'm sure a lot of people would find uh, fascinating.